Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to a special edition of The Buzz with Tom Markowski. I'm Lauren Plant, joined by Tom and getting an opportunity to talk about the football season. Football, so it, it's it, never too early to talk about football. It never is. And as cold as it is, and it's really cold right now, uh, we'll warm up and uh, kind of get you prepared for the big opening weekend. And uh, this has been a tradition now in Detroit, fourth year that the Detroit Sports Commission's Prep Kickoff Classic is taking place at Wayne State. Uh, spent many years uh, at, at the big day prep showdown at Eastern Michigan, and it's, it's been a successful move. Uh, it's been a really great environment. We love going down there to cover it. I think the teams enjoy playing uh, in this particular contest, the Detroit skyline in the background. And, uh, and we've had some really good games and some really interesting matchups uh, over the course of the last several years. And uh, we've got three state champions highlighting the 14-team seven game field, three days of football. Uh, going Thursday, August 27th through Saturday, August 29th. So Tom and I are here to kind of break down the matchups and uh, kind of give you a, a preview of what to expect down at Wayne State. And first off, uh, we've got one of two downriver matches, which of course, if you live downriver, no excuse. It's not Labor Day weekend, which we should probably point out right off the bat. That's a strong, that's yeah, a, it's a, that's a good move. Before. I think so, because a lot of times during Labor Day weekend, you know, people have picnics planned, or there's the jazz festival. Last or, chance to get out of town. Yeah, you know, it might be a Tiger game and during that weekend. But I think the weekend before gives people a chance to say, hey, let's go to Wayne State. Let's go downtown before the big rush for Labor Day. Interesting matchup right off the bat, the 4 o'clock game on Thursday the 27th. Southgate Anderson and Trenton. Now Southgate Anderson, the team went 5-4 and four a year ago. Disappointing for them, a team that usually is always trending upward. Trenton, a team that... Uh, Hadn't been making all that much noise the last few years, had a 7-4 and four season. Well, Bob's our necky coach in Trenton. I think they're the, seem like they're always the underdog in that league. They're one of the smallest schools, if not the smallest school in that league, them and Melvindale. Uh, but Southgate Anderson's always that rugged team, that, that tough, physical, downriver team that likes to slug it out. So I think this is a good matchup. Uh, this is always a good game. Uh, you know, those downriver league matchups that you think of, Wyandotte, Trenton, you know, Allen Park, those types of games are usually the best. And the interesting thing, when you do have conference games right out of the bat, these mean something. These matter. So, you know, as, as we're going to talk about when you've got kind of these crossover matchups, they're great and they're big, but when it comes to winning your league, they don't play any role. Here, they play a big role, not only in you've got to get these wins, but also it really means something. Yeah, a lot of times you have teams playing their opening game and you say, well, we can ease our way into the season. Right. And that's not going to be the case here. I think both Trenton and Southgate, which we talked before, are always teams that are, are pertinent in the, in the race for the downward River League title. So in the nightcap on Thursday night, August 27th, uh, it's the 7 o'clock game. It's a rematch of last year's game, which was a really good game. Lake Orion, very disappointing 4-5 and five a year ago, ch uh, playing Chippewa Valley, who was 8-4, and four, a very surprising uh, season they had a year ago. Chip Valley beat Lake Orion 38-35. Uh, that was at Chippewa Valley. Um, uh, Chip lost to Cass Tech in the regionals. They had a great season. Uh, but again, this is a good opportunity for both teams to make a statement early. Well, you look at last year's game, I think that that game kind of told where each of those seasons were going to go. Chippewa Valley wins a close game, ends up having a really good season beating Dakota, yeah. which they're going to keep pounding that drum oh, yeah. at, at the, for the Big Reds Go there. Out. And you look at Lake Orion, they lost. I was at their game against Oxford, a real close game they lost. Here was another close game they lost at Chippewa Valley. That was one of the seasons that Lake Orion is going to say, what if, what if, what if. So point being, if either team can win this game, or either team who wins this game is going to get off to a good start and going to say, hey, we're pretty good. We beat a good team. Yeah, and I can promise you that I'm sure Lake Orion right now is in the gym getting ready for this season because obviously a huge disappointment for them what took place last year. And uh, again, this is going to be an opportunity on a main stage, night game. All the press is going to be on them because nobody else is playing that night. Uh, although it is Thursday, it might be the opening. So there'll be games. You'll that, have a lot there'll on be a lot of Thursday, games. However, this will be one of the marquee matchups. Oh, no question. I think throughout the state, yeah. this will be one of the marquee matchups. Yeah, okay. Let's go to Friday. We've got uh, a pair of games going on on Friday, the 4 o'clock game. Another downriver affair. So, again, no excuse to not get out there. Allen Park and Taylor Kennedy. Uh, Allen Park is 4-0 and 
in PKC games. You wonder why Tom Hoover doesn't want to play here all the time. He right. should be, a, you know, don't even ask me. I'll yeah. be there. Then it's the first time for Kennedy. And, and this, again, is a real good opportunity for Kennedy to make some hay. If they can beat Allen Park in week one, that's going to cause a, a big stir. Well, a lot of times you have an opening game and these teams aren't hitting on all cylinders. And if you if Kennedy's right. thinking of upsetting Allen Park, what better way to do it than the, in the opener and before uh, the Jaguars get things rolling? All right, well, we have a first time meeting ever between two football teams taking place in the nightcap on Friday night, the seven o'clock game. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. You've got Dearborn Fortson and Canton. Of course, uh, we know that Fortson went 10-1 and one a year ago. They were the Western Wayne Blue champion, uh, and they're taking on Canton, the KLAA South champions. They were 9-3 and three a year ago, but again, first time these two have met on the football field. Uh, Hard to believe. Yes, because they're really, really not is. that far apart, no. you know, Wayne County schools. And, and they both do well in the state playoffs, usually, um, that they have not met. It's a, it, I would never have thunk that. But, um, what do you being, know about these two teams coming back? Now? Well, I know that uh, Dearborn Fortson is going to have to replace a lot yes. of their offensive power. They they had a lot of seniors, and that's why they had such a good se or season last year. Yeah. Saw them beat Frazier in the playoffs, and they lost that tough one against Cass Tech in the second round. So I think there's going to be some rebuilding done at, uh, for Coach Walker at, uh, at Fortson. Canton, I, I don't know if they ever rebuild. Right. Uh, they, they always are going to come, and granted, sometimes uh, Tim Beckler takes a little longer to develop his offensive line where they get that uh, wing T going, that tight T formation they use. Um, but now I, I think Canton, if, if you're going to give an early you know, nod to a team in this game, I would go with Canton just because the, I think Fortune's going to have too much to replay. Yeah, it's a classic. Great offensive philosophy and team going on a team that's always built on defense. If anything, Fortson always brings it, especially from their linebacker. Yeah, I remember last year they had they had a couple D1 kids, yes, obviously, Jamil Sabal, you know, going to um, Central Michigan. Uh, they they were real strong last year, so you know that's that's Fortson tradition, just being a real physical team, you know, button down your chin straps and let's go to work. But Kent, Kent, if sometimes in the past uh, they've had some weaknesses defensively, uh, but offensively I don't think there's any question they're a juggernaut. All right, we got three games going on Saturday. This is always the big day at the PKC. Games at 11, 2, and 5 p.m. this year, and they've spread them out well in doing that. Uh, but the morning game is a couple of state champions. You've got Orchard Lake St. Mary's uh, taking on the uh, Division Seven champion, Detroit Loyola. Of course, Orchard Lake, the D3 winners, and again, these first, first, first time, time these school I saw that and I didn't want to say it unless but it sounds bizarre that Loyola and St. Mary's have never played. Well, they are Catholic League teams, granted different divisions, but never squared off. Well, you know, in the time frame, Loyola has not been that great of a football program. It's only been in the last maybe five, six years that they've really taken that big step forward. Obviously last year winning the state title for the first time, but you know, talking to John Callahan, I had a, I saw him at a basketball game and those, that run that he had, those three straight years in the state finals, was built on a lot of players that were playing together for a long time. I forgot what he told me. It's like 12 or 14 of his kids are, are going on to play a college ball. Now, so be careful what you wish for. Well, you know, they only, the carry, matchup, right, they only carry about 28, 30 kids on their team. Now you're losing 12 kids that are going to play on the college. They're going to be rebuilding. And, and I told John, I said, you got, it's going to, you guys Work's not, work on your hands, you and your coaching staff, yeah. especially playing St. Mary's, who I feel, along with De La Salle, will be the two favorites in the Central Division coming in. Well, speaking of De La Salle, they're going to be in the next game, and that's the 2 p.m. game, taking on uh, Martin Luther King. King went 8-2 and two a year ago, really solid season. Obviously, De La Salle was a, a season of miracles, you know, for them, and uh, to win... Uh, to finish 11 and three, go to Ford Field, win the state championship again. Uh, everything they could have ever hoped and dreamed. You know that it'll be a season they talk about for the ages for that team. But now it's a chance for them to say it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, it was so funny because De La Salle had some really good teams. Obviously, really? twice losing to Muskegon in the state final, and there was always you know they're trying to get can't over get that over hump. Hump. Right. right. And even when they get there, they can't win it. A close game that one time, last play type of deal losing at the goal line and then the other years when they have good teams it seems like brother rice was in their way this last year they got brother rice out of the way in the regional final and again like i said st mary's and de la salle are the two favorites in in the central division um 
gosh, I, I, De La Salle might be even better than they were last year. Well, we, and we know there are a lot of good King players. When we did our top juniors uh, in the uh, State Champ Signing Day special, right. there were a couple there from King. They, you know, they have a kid, I think it was, uh, I believe the player's name is Lavert Hill, yep. going to, boy, I, Penn State committed to them. Uh, they're going to be loaded. They're always strong. Yeah, they're, they're going to be loaded. In fact, uh, there's some grumblings in the PSL that there's some uh, transfers that are happening that are going towards uh, East Lafayette there where the Martin Luther King is located. So we could see a lot more new faces at King next year, making them better. So yeah. this could be the most competitive game of the weekend. Absolutely. Could I agree. be star-studded too on King's side. Absolutely. Two o'clock start on Saturday, August 29th. The final game is going to be uh, Detroit Cast Tech and Salfia. These two teams did this a year ago, and uh, it is um, Cast Tech, a 12 and 1. Two years ago. Two years ago, thank you. The, uh, yeah, last the, year, yeah. Southfield played St. Mary's. That's correct, that's correct. Um, the PSL champ, uh, Cast Tech, 12 and 1. Uh, great season again for them, uh, regardless of the fact they didn't uh, get back to the finals, but uh, facing the co the co OAA white champion Southfield, who really kind of and they went nine and four, who really kind of like De La Salle got over some humps that they hadn't done before. Well, and also they were the team and like De La Salle went into the playoffs at six and three and maybe were overlooked by some, but you know Coach Tim Connolly's team they they played extremely well throughout the playoffs, ran into De La Salle in the semis, and this is a team that you know they've got a lot coming back. Yes, yeah, I know back. they got you know people like Buford and Johnson who are gone. But this could this Southfield team could be better. Um, and Cast Tech, you know, I talking to Thomas Wiltshire, they didn't have their usual dozen or 14 kids that went to D2, D1s. They had about a, a dozen, which for other schools would be like, hey, look yeah, what we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. for Cast Tech, it's like, right. no, we didn't have that many. Yeah, Southfield so, sent 19 players. Yes, they did have they, a lot. Yeah, two, they they deep, they nine. beat Cast in that yeah, category this year. That's statistic. They did. But uh, if you remember last year, Cast Tech had all those receivers and defensive backs who were underclassmen. They're going to be strong at the those two positions next year. All right, well, again, we're looking forward to it. August 27th through the 29th, that's a Thursday through Sunday, the Detroit Sports Commission Prep Kickoff Classic, the 11th anniversary overall of this event, and uh, kicking off uh, high school football the right way here in Michigan. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Of course, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on State Champs.